Hello everyone, Sick here. Today I'm going to be discussing all the details with the Halo MCC update that's coming soon. So, we've got some unfinished business. Of course they do. They didn't actually release everything from Season 8. So last year we announced that Halo MCC would move away from seasonal updates following the release of Season 8 Mythic. But by no means were we done with this legacy project. Good. So let's dive into the future of Halo MCC in 2022. So today's update, ODST Firefight Flood Fight. In Halo 3 ODST, we've done more than just add the Flood to Firefight. To support this fan favorite mode, we've made numerous networking improvements which benefit Firefight across the board. We've also fixed several issues with enemies getting stuck or not seeking out the player properly. So that's cool. Players can now use the Vizar map to see enemy locations, even while waiting to respawn in Firefight matchmaking. Players can now use the Energy Sword and Sentinel Beam in ODST for the first time ever. That's huge. I, I would never actually see us ever like doing that. I never didn't think 343 would add that, but they did. And I think this is actually one of the first times they've added, uh, yeah, this would be the first time Energy Sword and Sentinel Beams in ODST. And can even spawn with those weapons in Fiesta Fight. We've also mixed new enemies such as Elites and Flood into the Wave lineup for various arcade variants and Firefight matchmaking. So a lot of people in my previous video were like, hey, yeah, Flood Firefight's already been a thing. That's true. Uh, but when I was saying like it's going to be new, I mean, it's going to be in Firefight matchmaking. So that'll be really awesome. A handful of these fixes improvements have been imported back to Halo Reach as well. So, for example, players can now trade weapons with allies and evict them from vehicles to take over their seats in Firefight matchmaking. Cool. The Flood and Halo 3 ODST have also uh, received numerous upgrades over their counterparts in Halo 3. I don't exactly know what this means, but uh, I assume they're smarter, maybe? I uh, don't know, because there's... I mean, I thought the Halo 3 Flood was amazing already in itself, but it'll be interesting to see what upgrades they mean. Uh, first, players will notice that Flood are accompanied by Dense Fog, which gives each firefight mission a new spooky ambiance. And then players will see this fog dynamically fade in which a flood wave spawns and fade back out when a regular covenant wave spawns. That's really cool. It just basically makes it look creepier like this. Uh, flood can now occupy vehicles for the first time since Halo 2, and players will encounter and potentially commandeer these across multiple firefight missions. So that is amazing. Uh, I've missed that since Halo 2. Uh, I thought that was the coolest mission in Quarantine Zone when you'd have to fight the flood in uh, the tanks and warthogs and even goss hogs. I thought that was insane. Anyways, in ODST, there are three new types of flood combat forms. Uh, the ooh, new types, the infected civilian, the infected ODST, and the infected elite major, which sports red armor and energy shields. They don't have pictures of them here, but I would assume that's what they're talking about. Sweet. The flood can employ all their familiar strategies as well, stalker forms and climb on walls. Basically everything that's happened in Halo 3, they can still do. And Flood can also drop onto the map via dispersal spot. Okay, lastly, unlike the Master Chief, ODSCs can be, can be infected and resurrected by the Flood. Beware, as you may have to fight your own resurrected allies or even yourself. That's, kind of, that's awesome. So basically, if you die, then you can become a Flood. The Flood may be more ferocious than ever, but thankfully you have a few new options to combat them as well. New boons are available across the firefight missions to aid you against the un dead onslaught. These boons include things like weapon racks, containing assault rifles and battle rifles, neither of which were available in Firefight in the original ODST release. I agree. That, that is a true fact. Battle rifle will be awesome. Just headshots for days. On some play on sorry, on some maps, players will find some flame flamethrowers that fend off the flood. On others, players will be assisted by allies, marines, officers. I love how they say players will be assisted by allies. Like let's let's be real. They're all they're all gonna become flood. And then <laughs> Marines and uh, NNPD officers will help combat the flood and help you by manning vehicles and turrets. So basically just allies for you. Lastly, some flood enemies will be generous enough to drop uh, any grenades they may be carrying. Cool. UI improvements. Uh, nothing I've read here seems too crazy. Uh, the firefight voice preview behavior for Hill Reach and how items are previewed. Uh, so they've improved the presentation for that. We've updated and redesigned numerous icons and menu changes. Uh, custom game browser full title support and quick ma quick match flow. With the custom game browser, we've added support for automatic team changing, which allows game hosts to avoid manual team changes in favor of automatic evening teams out when a new match begin. It's available across all games, uh, so that'll be awesome, including Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, and Halo 4, which are new to the custom games browser with this update. So that is amazing. They're adding, yeah, it sounds like they're adding Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, and Halo 4 
which are new to the custom game browser. Yeah, so they're adding these games to the custom game browser. That is awesome. Forge and mod tools. We've added several changes to empower forgers and modders as well. In Halo Reach, Halo 4, and Halo 2 Anniversary, we've added support for team-based kill volumes. Forgers can now set a kill or safe volume to give a to a given team, and the boundary will only affect players on that team. For example, you can now have an now enclose an invasion spawn location in a soft kill volume that makes it inaccessible to the opposing team. That's really cool. I uh, I'm not a forger as much, so I, maybe that'd be very useful. Not really sure. In Reach, we've also added proper support to the target locator to reset on new rounds in multiplayer and to be synchronized properly across devices. That's awesome. So yeah, looks like they're doing modding tools, uh, campaign crossplay for Halo 3 and ODST. So I was actually, this is probably the biggest deal out of every, anything for me is because I have a lot of friends on PC and I'm on Xbox Series X and I can't play a campaign with them. But players on PC and Xbox consoles can now play these campaigns cooperatively online. That is huge. I hope they bring this for the rest of the campaigns, like Halo 1, 2, Reach, and all thing, everything like that. But I'm glad they're starting with the OG classics. Uh, not the OG classics, but the main classics, by that being the like, most popular campaigns. Note, this feature, uh, note that while this feature has been tested internally, the team requires additional insight from real players with differing, uh, different network setups. So there may be issues with your network. Campaign customization for Halo 4. So now your weapons that you have customized for Halo 4 can work in the campaign. Uh, that, and speaking of Halo 4 multiplayer, we made pre a few improvements to how weapon skins work there as well. Previous Previously, skins were only available in game variants with loadouts enabled. Now skins are applied in all game variants. Cool. Halo 3 metal update. I was actually curious about this because for some reason for me, when I get a splatter spree and I get a splatter Anytime after that, I always get splatter spree. It's like splatter spree, splatter spree, splatter spree. It made no sense. And then also another thing to consider was I can never get sharpshooter medals or be the bullet medals or any weapon based killing, like killing spree based weapon kills. I couldn't get those medals for some reason. So they've added support for 51 new multiplayer medals. Ooh, that's, that's insane. As well as fix the existing spectacular and triple double medals. Good. I never had any issues with these, but I had issues with spectaculars. These medals are always tracked, but players have control over if and how they are displayed. These additions range from kill medals to style medals to game specific game uh, type medals, objective medals. Uh, for players who prefer the legacy medal style but want a bit more feedback in the kill feed, the original plus medal display setting can be enabled. This setting displays all legacy medals plus three of the more common new ones. Okay. So you can make it simplified if you don't want the new medals. I'm going to want the new medals just because I'm curious what they are. Uh, Purists can simply... Oh, wait. There's also another option. There There it goes. Purists can simply enable the original medal display. Lastly, if you only, if the only reward you seek is the kill itself, players can now set the medal display setting to off. I don't know why you'd ever turn the medals off. Medals are cool, but you can do that now. Adjustments to monthly challenges and exchange rotations. Monthly challenges will grant points, which you can spend in the exchange. So monthly challenges, cool. The current seasonal challenges will shift to 28-day cadence and award XP and or points that you can spend in existing tiers for previous seasons. So that's cool. Yeah, same same old. They're just adding a monthly challenge, essentially. Skulltacular. So we'll be adding many of the skulls that were previously exclusive to Halo CE and Halo 2 to some of the other games as well. So they're adding Acrophobia. <laughs> So you can now fly in Halo 2. All tons of Halo 3 <laughs> skulls. Look at all these. Uh, they're adding bandana makes sense. Uh, Ghost that a lot of these were in other games, but they're basically making them available in Halo 3. So you can read these. There's a lot of them. Punching enemies make them drop grenades. Pinata that we've heard of that one before. Uh, we've had a, heard of malfunction before. They've just been in other Halos, but they're bringing them into other things. So flood combat forms spawned by infection forms reanimating of course are much more dangerous. Okay. Never heard of that one before, but that's cool. Same as listed of above for Halo 3 ODST, and then they add acrophobia for Halo 3 ODST. This is a big update, guys. <laughs> Looking ahead. Uh, last year we set out to do a lot of things and complete the majority of them. As we went into the holidays and the beginning of the year, the team has worked on bug fixes for new features and developing the remainder of what we've slated for release. Below is a, key, is a list of the key features and content the team has up its sleeve to release over the course of this year. Look at that, this year. 
Uh, so this is what we're getting this year. Mod support uh, for the remaining games, remaining customization content, campaign collectibles for the remaining games. I wonder if they add achievements for that. I really hope they do. Uh, they can make. They could easily make. With all these campaign collectibles they're adding, they could easily make this a 10,000 gamer score game. I have I already have all the achievements, so it'd be another thing to go for. That'd be really fun. Post match customization screen, remaining games. Post match customization customization for multiplayer, which allows players to set pose for the. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, this really makes it feel like it's kind of like Halo Infinite, like post game carnage report. You can have a uh, what seems to be like a a pose similar to what Halo Infinite already has. Additional adjustments. So that's for this year uh, that they're looking ahead. Nothing too crazy I've seen in this. The campaign collectibles is fun, and the post-match customization screen. Those look awesome, but I'm hoping they add co-op campaign to other games. Additional adjustments for this year as well with our move away from Halo MCC's seasonal releases, we will be making some UI adjustments and changes to how things from the seasonal model appear in the game. Cool. One last item, major item that it that we are working, doing work on is medals for Halo 3. Everything from adding universal medals to the game, updating XP across them, which is good because Halo 3 does not give you that much XP, including some missing medals, and then also adding toggle for players. Switch back to how they originally appeared. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so this looks incredible. Good job, 343. I applaud you for this. There's nothing I can really bash on uh, at all, so... That's, that's, that's good. Once we have wrapped up the updates this year, the team will continue to engage with the community. Cool. Beyond Seasons. As seasonal content updates are no longer the update model for MCC, we're aiming to deliver multiple updates sprinkled throughout 2022. So that's, as we move throughout the year, we will make sure to keep the community in the loop. Cool. So that is the update, guys. That is the update. What do you guys think of all these news? I kind of just read through the article for you and kind of uh, went through the highlights. Feel free to leave a comment down below what you guys think of this. I'm really excited.